Welcome, everybody. Thank you very much for joining us. My name is Tanner Watt. I'm a Municipal Program Specialist with Local Authority Services in Ontario. Uh, today, I'm joined by Tristan Walker with Deep Trekker and Brian Calhoun with the latest Aerospace. They're going to be providing some information on uncrewed vehicles and their use for municipalities. So products through both of these companies are available through the Purdue Canoe Procurement Group, which helps to lower costs and simplify procurement for municipalities. So we are recording this webinar. We'll be sending out a link to everybody who registered after the event. Um, for Q&A, we will use the function built into Zoom. So at the bottom of your screen, there's a little Q&A box. At any time throughout the presentation, if you think of a question, type it in there. And uh, once Tristan and Brian are done, we will open those up and get those answered for you. We're going to be sending out a survey after. Um, please fill that out if you have it. If you can take the time, it really helps us to make sure that uh, these webinars are doing what we need them to do. So with that, I will hand it off to Tristan. Perfect. Thank you, Tanner. Uh, so I'm Tristan Walker. I'm our sales manager here at Deep Trekker and Pipe Trekker. So. We are a Canadian manufacturer of underwater ROVs, as well as unmanned vehicles for inside of pipes, water tanks, uh, different storage facilities for both water and dry areas. Uh, so we're located here in Kitchener, Ontario, uh, where we do all of our engineering, manufacturing, everything in the house. Uh, as you can see on the screen here, these are a few of the vehicles that we manufacture. So uh, on the top row, we've got all of our submersibles, starting off with our uh, smallest ROVs going up to our largest there with the Revolution uh, as that big black one in the middle. And then to the right of that, we also do drop cameras for aquaculture, uh, as well as bridge monitoring and whatnot. And then we move into some of our uh, pipeline vehicles. So looking at the ones on the bottom, we have our uh, pipe trucker A150 and A200 pipe crawlers for pipe diameters ranging from six inch and going up from there. Uh, and then the vehicles to the right of that are used mainly by municipalities and contractors for uh, the cleaning of both reservoirs as well as water tanks and storage facilities. Uh, so we sell to a lot of different industries, everything from aquaculture to infrastructure such as bridges, uh, Canadian military, US military, as well as militaries across the world. Currently we're sold in over a hundred countries. Uh, with thousands of vehicles uh, everywhere from our back door here in Kitchener all the way to uh, the other side of the world like China and whatnot that way. Uh, we sell to municipalities for their pipelines as well as their water tanks, towers, uh, bridge inspections, tunnels. Uh, we get into shipping and then we move into things like commercial diving or underwater discovery uh, where we help out with uh, uh, finding of shipwrecks and whatnot. So what makes us different than any other uh, ROV company out there is A, firstly, we're Canadian made. Uh, so all of the service is done back here at our facility. So if anything goes wrong, we're there to back it up. All of our units are extremely easy to use. So they are uh, held with a, a couple of joysticks with a screen on, on, the, uh, on that controller so you can see exactly what it's doing. Um, all of our units all have the ability to be portable. So they're all battery operated with the option of having either direct power or a hybrid power solution, uh, which allows you to be as small as a single case to get it out to site. So you can be in the water within 30 seconds, depending on what you're looking to inspect. Uh, all of our units are built of uh, high quality materials such as aluminum, stainless steel, uh, sapphire and whatnot that way. And all of our units are affordable. So they all come in at a very low price tag as well, uh, especially with working with companies like Canoe, uh, being able to, to get a contract out there for all of our municipalities and uh, whatnot alike. So a couple different things that I've already touched on a little bit here. So some of our ROVs are used for water tower and tank inspections, uh, as well as cleaning those. Uh, we also get into reservoirs, bridges, dam walls, um, canals that are being inspected. And then we go into the sewer and sanitary uh, as, well, uh, as well as large diameter uh, storm drains, uh, transmission lines and whatnot that way as well. So here's a quick little video of the unit in action. Uh, I'll turn down the volume on this, but you, you'll be able to see it in operation. With rough. So 
So inside of here are a few different customers that we've worked with to get this video out, but uh, you can see obviously being inspecting of clean water, drinking water, uh, storage tanks, uh, as well as cleaning as well. So everything can be disinfected down to AWWA or OWWA standards. Uh, so that way you feel safe while putting it into a live drinking water uh, facility such as a, a water tank or a tower. So here's just a few of our vehicles. So everything from the smallest ROV up to the largest revolution there. Uh, and then everything is uh, single person portable. So coming in Pelican cases, such as these, uh, these units here. So one of our case studies that we've dealt with uh, or that we've worked with is the city of Hot Springs. So they are down in the US. Uh, their stormwater division purchased one of our units back in 2017. Since then, they've added a few more vehicles uh, for both underwater ROV inspection, as well as uh, stormwater and sanitary lines. Uh, they've been able to decrease their uh, amount of flushing and cleaning of lines by adding more CCTV uh, inspections into their mix which is not only giving them a better view of their, uh, their assets, but it's also de uh, increasing the life of their assets as well, because cleaning of those pipelines is uh, essentially taking time away from uh, the longevity of those pipes by adding uh, more high pressure water uh, and whatnot that can uh, affect some of those, uh, the operation of that. So here are a few cities that have worked with us. Uh, like I said, we've worked with thousands of uh, or hundreds of thousands of customers around the world uh, in over 100 countries. Um, but we work with uh, cities like the city of Toronto, Kitchener, uh, Kitchener, Ontario. Uh, we work with BC Water, BC Hydro. We work with uh, LADWP, Metropolitan Water, Miami Dade, as well as thousands more across the globe. So if you have any other questions, by all means, uh, reach out to us here on this webinar, uh, or you can reach out to me uh, with my details below. Um, but it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me on, Tanner. Perfect. Now I'll just uh, jump right in here. Uh, my name is Brian Calhoun, and I am just sharing my screen. And perfect. Okay. Uh... There we go. Okay. Um, first off, uh, thank you very much for joining us. I appreciate everyone who has uh, taken the time to uh, uh, listen to my voice and, and watch our presentation, um, just for taking the time for being here with us. So uh, my name is Brian Calhoun. I work for Velatus Aerospace. I work within uh, a subsidiary called Velatus Drones. We are basically uh, your entire one-stop shop for drones and uh, training, accessories, and a few other uh, capital investments that are drone related. Um, but uh, we are fully qualified to be uh, the one stop solution you need just to get a drone program going. Or actually, uh, if you have one and you're looking to revamp it, we can assist with that. Some of the things that we can uh, help you with are uh, drone services. Um, there could be situations in which you would like to uh, take advantage of what a drone can do, but you may not want to actually do the piling yourself. That's more than acceptable in uh, in such a uh, dynamic drone industry that uh, we are well-placed just to jump in there and assist you with that. Um, we have had customers who would like to test run the idea of having a drone before they actually jump into it, and we have run drone missions for them. Uh, we've had customers who they have a well-established drone program, but they suddenly find themselves short of manpower. We have been able to step in there with uh, our experience and our equipment uh, and just kind of shore up their needs until the busy season passes for them. These are all just a few of the reasons why um, we offer drone services that we can uh, offer to you and assist with mapping, inspections, uh, monitoring of wildlife, of wildfires, of just infrastructure. 
Uh, if there's something that you need just to have uh, reviewed periodically, we can definitely assist you with that. Uh, the group that I work for, like I said, within the Lattice Aerospace, we used to be called Omnidu Tech. We're transitioning away from that, uh, but you're, but we are the uh, hardware sales and support division of the Lattice Aerospace. So in terms of uh, what you need to get off the ground, any accessories that can assist you with um, like batteries, chargers, that sort of thing, uh, technical support for those purchases. Uh, we also offer repairs in case of um, some sort of uh, damage or just your regular maintenance, which should be done at least once every six months. Uh, these are all things that we can assist you with. And we uh, we assist many customers. I'll show a few of them in a second. But uh, as I mentioned, there is some training that is normally required to get a drone program going, uh, government required certifications. Uh, we also offer specialized training. We have uh, people who have come from uh, multiple industries, uh, first responders, for example, um, energy companies, uh, people that used to work in those industries have joined us. And uh, we lean on their talents to help uh, uh, customers that are in those industries or in adjacent industries trying to not just learn how to fly a drone, but also how do you take that information? What actually actual information will be of help to you? What won't be of any assistance to you? Um, you know, we can definitely skip you through the very early learning stages and get you going by leveraging that experience. So we do offer specialized training um, to a, a number of different industries um, that, uh, that we support. And then also, as I mentioned, uh, there's there's quite a lot that can um, be confusing about getting a drone program off the ground if you haven't done it yet. Um, we, like I said, have helped hundreds of customers uh, already get their um, programs going, regardless of being in, uh, you know, uh, government, being in the private industry, being in um, an, an energy sector, being the first responder. Uh, we have built a number of skills, uh, best practices, um, learnings that can definitely fast track people. So we can definitely offer that um, as well as specific consulting projects. Um, Beyond Visual Line of Sight will be coming uh, very soon to uh, to Canada. But there's already been an, a handful of uh, Beyond Visual Line of Sight uh, special flight opera operation certificates uh, provided by Transport Canada. Um, that will just grow in number as time goes on but the process of going from being able to uh fly with in visual line sight to being able to go beyond visual line sight uh that can be um not a impossible task but there's quite a number of things to consider uh, since we've already helped a number of of uh organizations secure their uh beyond visual line of sight certificates we can assist you with that as well but um when to actually uh, decide to jump in, start your own drone program. There are a number of things to consider. These are some of the people that we have helped uh, with those considerations in the past. And uh, we'd be more than thrilled if we could add everyone here to our growing list of, of satisfied customers. But uh, some of the hardware that you may want to consider, this would be the one that I would suggest to anybody looking to, to start a drone program as your first um, and the core of your drone program, um, the Matrice uh, 350, it is a very solid, customizable platform. It allows you to uh, take one platform and do uh, LiDAR scans, uh, high resolution photogrammetry. Um, uh, you can also do thermal uh, uh, analysis as well. And that's just what DJI is offering as a top of the line. There's a, a huge amount of third-party support for this as well. So uh, you have a lot of uh, aspects you can unlock with just one drone, which uh, isn't unique to this unit, but this unit does it better than any other units uh, out there right now. It also has a slightly cheaper uh, younger brother, the Matrice 30T, uh, the Matrice 30T has all the benefits of uh, of the 350 in terms of capabilities of flying. These units, uh, I would not say that they should be given to uh, people who are not trained, but they are extremely easy to operate, far easier to operate than any other units out there. 
Um, so uh, they definitely are a benefit in that aspect. One of the reasons why we would suggest the 30T is because there are budget uh, restraints that uh, constraints that we are aware of that uh, sometimes getting the the biggest best drone out there. Uh, may not be feasible. Uh, we do also offer additional uh, units that are available. Um, if you cannot, for some reason, get into uh, the DJI environment, we understand that there are some um, uh, requirements that have been passed down uh, from agencies uh, that uh, suggest that DJI is not the way you want to go. Uh, if that is the case, we do offer uh, other units. This one, the Altel, Evil 2, it is made uh, by a uh, Chinese-owned company. Uh, before getting to drones, they got into um, uh, manufacturing of automobile, automobile diagnostic equipment, and then they moved over to uh, drones afterwards. Uh, their drones are actually made in Vietnam. Um, so it's owned in, in uh, China, uh, made in Vietnam. They have North American headquarters. Um, but it is an option that uh, that you may also want to consider, as well as just straight up North American made options like uh, the Inspired Flight series. Their IF uh, series is um, extremely stable, has many of the capabilities of the uh, of the DJI uh, high end drones. Uh, I would say that in terms of operations, they are a little more difficult to pilot and. Uh, not impossible, but uh, certainly do they, they do not have the features that a DJI drone has. Uh, but they are a uh, a very good alternative if that's the way you want to go, and extremely versatile as well as you can see by uh, the very the very many number of payloads that are up uh, on the screen right now. Uh, on top of drones, as I mentioned before, we sell drone accessories. Um, what I'm showing right now is. Uh, the airport that is a drone nesting station, which allows for semi-autonomous uh, uh, launching and uh, retrieval of drones. The drone can take off from this platform, it can land again on the platform once this mission is done. Uh, the drone can be charged off the platform, and your data can be downloaded remotely and sent to uh, to your uh, office location. So, uh, in theory, once uh, beyond visual line of sight flights become more uh, commonplace, then this would be a tool that would allow you to do those flights without actually even having to leave your office and already ready to go. It can be incorporated into uh, any drone system uh, that we can fit on the platform. Um, there are there are a handful that are too big for it, but the vast majority of, of units out there that are available can easily fit into this equipment. And uh, yes, there's also uh, the DX1000. I do not have an image of it, but I've written its name on the top of the slide. Uh, that's a, a mobile command center. It's a it's a nicely equipped van with uh, a, a lot of screens, uh, a, a lot of communication capabilities. Uh, it makes drone operations very easy um, and, and very comfortable if you have to be out in the field for a long time. Uh, some of the things that can be accomplished with uh, with drone technology, um, one of the most common uh, cases is just um, maintenance and inspection, confirming everything is uh, exactly where it should be, in the state it should be. Uh, you can do this for surfaces. You can do this uh, for bridges. Uh, you can uh, confirm that construction is uh going at the pace that you require to, at the standards that you require to be done at. Um, you can do elevation mapping. If you are going to uh, perhaps start a building project, you can uh, scan the area and determine what the drainage looks like, the building materials that would be required, uh, get a whole understanding of the area before you even start. If you're uh, involved in agricultural or forestry projects, you can use uh, the uh, multispectral cameras that are available with some of these drones to get a good idea of the plant life. And just uh, simple asset management as well is a very good use for some of this equipment. It can just help you get into uh, an area that may be hard to access, get an idea of what's actually on site, and then um, collect that data and use it in your reports to involve uh, your team, keep them up to date with what you have available at a specific location. Um, first responders as well is a, another massive area of uh, of um, 
uh, or, or massive industry uh, that uh, has really adopted drones. Um, here is an example of one of the common uh, reasons and use cases. Uh, this is a good example of why many fire departments across the country have uh, seriously invested into thermal drone technology specifically. Uh, a number of, of different organizations use different payloads, but uh, uh, the fire departments of, of Canada have really adopted thermal technology specifically for this reason. As you can see on the one side of the screen, you have a uh, color image of a fire that uh, has engulfed this building. Very hard to see what's going on. Uh, not much information you can understand from looking at that. Uh, on the other side, you have a thermal image where you can clearly see uh, the heat map of the of the area that has been caused by the fire. Um, and then you can make judgments based off of uh, what you can see, how far the fire spread, what sort of plans you need to uh, enact. And this can be something that, for example, your decision makers don't have to be at the site in order to make use of this. We can take these images and we can broadcast them securely over the internet uh, to uh, directly to decision makers so that they can uh, make these choices before they even get on site uh, and have a better idea before they even get there. So um, not just for this, but also for search and rescue um, and a number of, of unfortunate wildfires that have been happening in Canada uh, over the last couple of years, um, these thermal payloads have become really indispensable tools to, uh, to first responders. Um, so uh, that is what I was uh, more than uh, thrilled to show you guys. Uh, here's our contact information. Uh, if you have a question that is more technical focused, I'd be happy to explain um, uh, how these, these systems work and how you can use them. Um, I've also listed Rachel. She is the director of our enterprise uh, sales team, and she uh, is the best person to uh, discuss um, uh purchasing the equipment, uh, the actual process of purchasing the equipment. Um, but uh, feel free to reach out to me if you want to get started to question. We can involve Rachel uh, at some point. But yes, uh, that is what I was hoping to show you. Uh, thank you for your time. Great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Tristan. We'll uh, turn our cameras back on and start to go through the Q&A. So we've got one question already. If there are any others from the attendees, please type them in. The first question, is there a platform that orchestrates the drones and allows you to control and manage them? Whoever wants to go first. So for the underwater <clears throat> ROV side, um, I don't know if you're, you're asking for aerial drones or underwater ROVs, but uh, from our side, we do have, uh, uh, we're coming out with a very shortly a platform where you can view all of your data uh, that you've done in previous inspections as well as currently. And then if we get into our pipe crawlers and stuff like that, there are a lot of different platforms that allow you to, to do all of this with it. All right. Uh, Brian, anything you wanted to add onto that? Oh, looks like his uh, connection dropped out again. Sorry, from an area. Oh, there we go. From a standpoint, there's a number of... Yes, yeah, sorry. There seems to be a, a small delay on my side. I do apologize for for uh, slowing things down. But um, yes, uh, I do apologize. And uh, in in terms of orchestrating the drones and allowing them uh, to be controlled, there's a number of methods that can uh, be used. Each of these uh, come with uh, first off a controller that should allow you to uh, either control the unit directly within a couple of kilometers, or uh, will allow you to program to do them uh, remote operations. Uh, but uh, there are uh, programs that are web-based that will allow you to um, uh, plan and launch missions, uh, um, uh, capture the data remotely as well, and bring them back in. Uh, DJI has, has um, uh, Flight Hub 2. Uh, Flight Base is another one. Uh, these are all programs that uh, we can definitely, if anyone would like to reach out, we can definitely have long discussions about. But um uh, in terms of that, those are the two for flight operations. And then there's uh, a few other programs um, uh, that would allow you to track maintenance and stuff like that, uh, if that's the aspect of management that you want to discuss. Um, but yes. 
All right, I think that takes care of those. So we'll give it another minute to see if there are any other questions. Um, for a lot of municipalities, I think they are looking at the, buying their first drones. So for a, a new participant, what would a training session look like? Uh, Tristan, maybe you can go first and then Brian. Yeah, so for ours, uh, there's a couple different options. So we give free online training for any one of our vehicles. Uh, so there's a bunch of courses that any operator can take at any point. Uh, we also have paid trainings that we can come out to site. We can train you at site. Um, but a lot of the vehicles, they don't require necessarily, now depending on what the, the full outfit looks like, um, some of the, the base units don't need uh, a lot of training where some of the other ones where you get into things like your sonars and, and adding a lot of those other third party options that's when you'd want to add some of that more uh, intensive training. And for the air side, uh, there is pay training, like I said, that we do offer. Uh, that training would include uh, on-site classroom sessions and then hands-on sessions where uh, we'll walk you through not just uh, how to actually operate the drone, but um, what you would like to have for uh, pre-flight checklist, what you would like to have for flight checklist, what, what you should do in an emergency situation, um, some ba basic maintenance can be discussed as well. And then we'll actually walk you through the process of getting the uh, government uh, uh, provided um, credentials, the basic and then the advanced certification. There is uh, a requirement for uh, a written test to pass the basic that will give you the ability to have uh, control of a, a smaller drone um, at a farther distance of, uh, of uh, away from people. And then uh, once you pass that, you can move on to the advanced certificate. The advanced certificate uh, requires you to write another test. And then once you pass that test, you can move on to an actual flight test, uh, which we can actually administer for you um, as well at your location. And then uh, once you have those two, the basic and the advanced certificate, uh, you've met the uh, government's legal requirements for uh, for flying a drone. Um, at that point, you just need to uh, understand the process of creating a, a, a flight authorization for the government. They have uh, what's called NAV drone. It's an easy use portal. Uh, we can walk you through uh, informing the government of the, your wish to fly of how to get automatic approval. Um, this, uh, the, this tool is wonderful because before you would have to actually write a long document to provide to the government, wait for approval. It could be a long process. Now with NAV drone, it's a matter of a couple of clicks, as long as you're in an area that is not uh, requiring more specific uh, and, and more detailed uh, flight re requirements, which these are all things we can discuss for sure um, uh, as the uh, as the requirements um, become more complicated, we can definitely go through each step by step and show you what you need to actually pass that requirement. Um, but yes, we definitely, to make a, a, a long story short, uh, there is there is much to consider, but we definitely offer that training from start to finish and can actually walk you through the process before we, we uh, exit the situation so that not only are you trained, but you've actually done it once or twice before we actually, um, you know, send you out to do your missions. All right. Well, without any further questions in the queue, I think we can wrap it up there. Thank you very much, Tristan and Brian, for your time. Thanks, everybody, who joined us today. Uh, and have a good rest of your day. Pleasure. Thanks for having us on. Thank you very much for having us.